This is part 5 of Angular CRUD tutorial. In part 2 of this video series, we discussed performing the read operation and display the list of employees. In this video and in the next few videos, we'll discuss performing the create operation. To understand the create operation, let's build a form that helps us create a new employee. For this, we'll make use of this create employee component that we created in one of our previous videos. Along the way, we'll also discuss performing validation and displaying meaningful error messages to the user. There are two ways to create forms in Angular. Template-driven forms, model-driven forms. Modern-driven forms are commonly called as reactive forms. Both these approaches have their own pros and cons. For example, template-driven forms are generally used to create simple forms. On the other hand, reactive forms are used to create more complex forms. For example, if you want to add form controls dynamically or perform cross-field validation, we use the reactive forms approach. There are several other differences between template-driven and reactive forms. We'll discuss those differences in detail in a later video. In this video, we'll use the template-driven approach to build the create employee form. As the name implies, template-driven forms are heavy on the template. This means we do most of the work in the view template of the component. Now, the first thing that we want to do is design our create employee form. We want it to look like this. To keep this form simple, at the moment we only have two fields, full name and email. In our upcoming videos, we'll discuss adding the other fields like phone number, department, date of birth, etc. Also notice at the moment, we only have text boxes on the form. Again, in our upcoming videos, we'll discuss working with radio buttons, check boxes, drop down lists, etc. We are using Bootstrap to style this create employee form. As you can see here, we have got a Bootstrap panel. Within the panel header, we have this text create employee. In the panel body, the two text boxes and their associated labels. And in the panel footer, the save button. So let's design our create employee form like this. To speed things up, I'm going to copy the panel HTML that we already have in our list employees component. Let's copy these five lines of code and paste it within our create employee component and then we'll change the bits that are required. First we need to close the panel div so let's include a closing div there and we also want to close this outer div so let's include another closing div and then we want a panel footer as well so let's make a copy of that div and paste it right there and we want this div to be the panel footer so let's change the class from panel-heading to panel-footer and within the panel footer we want a button and we want this to be save button let's close the button and then we want this button to be of type submit so let's set the type attribute to submit and we want to style this button using the bootstrap button classes so let's set the class attribute to btn and btn dash primary and then within the panel heading we want to display this text create employee so let's remove this and include create employee text and we don't want this ng4 so I'm going to remove that altogether let's save our changes and our server is running in watch mode so the browser should have automatically reloaded notice we have got a panel as expected now we need to include those two text boxes and their associated labels within the panel body so let's flip over to visual studio code and inside this panel body div let's include another div element and i'm going to set its class to bootstrap form group class and inside this form group we're going to have a label and its associated input element. So let's include a label first and this is going to display full name and we want an associated input element as well. So let's create an input element, give it an ID, let's call it full name and we want a text box. So let's also set the type to text and we're going to use another bootstrap class to style this text box and that class is form dash control 
and let's close our input element so this is going to display the text box for full name let's do the same thing for email so let's copy that and paste that here and change the label to email and the ID here to email let's save our changes since our server is running in watch mode when we take a look at the browser we should say full name and email at the moment the labels and their associated input elements are not linked meaning when I click on this full name label notice its associated input element doesn't receive focus so let's link the label with its input element and we do that by using the for attribute so on this label element here let's set the for attribute to the ID of its associated input element in this case full name so let's do the same thing on this label as well so let's set its for to this ID email let's save the changes notice now when I click on full name label its associated input element receives focus similarly when I click on email label its associated input element receives focus until now on this create employee form we have not done anything specific to angular all this that you see right here is standard HTML and bootstrap now let's wrap all this HTML in a form tag let's move the closing form tag to the end now one very important point to keep in mind is whenever angular sees this form tag it's going to automatically attach a directive called ng form to this form element the ng form directive supplements the form element with additional features it keeps track of all the form controls that we create and monitor their properties like value valid touched dirty pristine etc even at the form level we have got all these properties we'll discuss these properties in detail in our upcoming videos in this video we'll be looking at the value property to get a reference to this form I'm going to create a variable here and I'm calling it employee form and I'm going to set this to ng form remember this is the directive that angular attaches whenever it says the form element so here this employee form is called the template reference variable meaning it holds a reference to this entire form and notice we have set it to ng form and this ng form directive is attached to the form element whenever angular sees the form tag and we know this ng form directive supplements the form element with additional features and properties that means now we can use this template reference variable to access various features and properties that the ng form directive provides for example to get the value of the form we can use its value property on the employee form template reference variable along the same lines if we want to check if the form is valid we can use its valid property now let's use the value property so just after the closing form element I'm going to use interpolation use the employee form template reference variable and then use the value property on that and to nicely format the data I'm going to use JSON pipe let's save our changes and take a look at the browser notice nothing is displayed let's investigate what's going on by launching the browser developer tools we are on the console tab and look at this error right here there is no directive with export as set to ng form and notice here we are setting our template reference variable employee form to ng form this ng form directive is provided by the forms module but we haven't imported that forms module yet so let's go back to visual studio code and within our root module file which is app.module.ts let's include the required import statement to import forms module so forms module is present in this library angular slash forms and now we need to include the forms module as part of the import array notice the error is gone so let's close the developer tools and look at what is displayed right here we have an empty object so let's understand what's happening behind the scenes because this is important now if you look at this employee form this is a template reference variable that we have defined right here so it holds a reference to our form 
So what Angular is going to do behind the scenes is it automatically creates a form model for us and that form model is going to keep track of all the form controls. At the moment on this form we have two form controls that we are interested in full name and email. But if you look at the auto generated form model notice it is empty at the moment even when we type within our full name form control and email form control nothing happens the angular auto generated form model is still empty that's because for the form controls to be tracked by the angular generated form model we'll have to use ng model directive on all those form controls we discussed the ng model directive and two way data binding in great detail in part 15 of our Angular 2 course. So if you're new to both these concepts, please check out our Angular 2 course. I'll have the link available in the description of this video. At the moment, none of our form controls have the ng model directive. So naturally, the Angular generated form model is empty. Now let's set the ng model directive on one of these form controls and see what happens. Let's actually set this on the full name input element. So let's use the banana in a box syntax and then use the ng model directive. So this specifies two-way data binding which we discussed in great detail in our Angular 2 course and I'm going to set this to full name. Let's save our changes and take a look at the browser. Notice now we don't have even that empty object. Let's launch browser developer tools and see what's going on. Notice the error message right here. If ng model is used within a form tag either the name attribute must be set or the form control must be defined as standalone. So basically it's saying if we use this ng model directive within a form tag then we also have to set the name attribute. So let's set the name attribute right here and I'm going to set it to fn short for full name because we have got too many full names here. So let's save our changes and take a look at the browser. Notice the error is gone and we have that empty object back. Now look what happens when we type in the full name form control. We have this property called fn. This is the value that we have specified for the name attribute. So basically Angular is using the name attribute value as a property in the generated form model. We also have the value that we have typed into the corresponding form control. Now look what happens when we type in the email form control nothing happens. So at the moment the angular generated form model is not tracking this email form control and we know the reason for that. That's because at the moment on this email form control we don't have ng model directive or the name attribute. So let's define both of them on this email form control as well. Let's change the name to email and let's also set the ng model directive to email. Now both the form controls should be tracked by the angular generated form model. There we go. Now to make this property name more meaningful let's use full name instead of fn and to achieve that we know what to do. We have to change the name property value right here. So let's change this to full name and we know this is the angular generated form model and to specify that I'm going to include the static text angular generated form model. So now if we take a look at the browser we have those changes right here. So if I type in the full name property now we see the property name as full name instead of fn and we also see the email as expected. Now what we want to be ultimately do is access this angular generated form model within our component class. Once we are able to do that, we can save this data anywhere we want, be it a database table, text file, XML file, anywhere really. Accessing this form model within our component class is very simple. For that, on the form tag, I'm going to use the ng submit directive. Notice we are using event binding here. So anytime we submit this form, either by hitting the enter key or by clicking the save button. Remember, the save button is a submit button. So when we click on that, the form is submitted. So when this form is submitted, we want to call this save employee method. And to the save employee method, we are passing our template reference variable. At the moment, we don't have the save employee method. So let's go ahead and create that now. So in our component class, let's include save employee method. 
we know this method is going to receive our employee form. Let's call it EMP form. And the type of this is going to be ng form. We don't have this ng form imported yet. We'll do that in just a bit. This method is not going to return anything. So let's set the return type to void. For now, let's log the form model to the console. In our upcoming videos in the series, we will discuss calling a service to save the data to a database table. For now, let's log the form model to the console. Finally, let's include the required import statement to import ng form from Angular Forms. Let's save our changes and take a look at the browser. Let's fill in full name and email form controls. And then before we click the save button, let's launch browser developer tools and then submit this form by clicking the save button. Notice we have the full name and email logged to the console as expected. Now let's log the entire employee form and see what happens. At the moment, we are logging the value property of the employee form. Let's knock off that and log the form itself. Let's fill in these two form controls. And before we submit this form, remember at the beginning of this video, we discussed that this ng form directive supplements this form element with additional features and properties like dirty, touched, valid, value, etc. Now when we submit this form, we should see all those properties. Now let's make some more room right here. And if we look at this ng form, since we have modified the data within the form controls, notice the dirty property is set to true. And if we scroll down a bit, we can see the touched property set to true because we have touched the form controls. And if we scroll down a bit, we can see the value property. It's an object. And if we expand that, we can see the two properties, email and full name. And we have our valid property right here. At the moment, it is true because we don't have any validation rules. So both the form controls have passed validation. So the form is also valid. So all these properties are very useful for performing validation. We'll discuss validation in our upcoming videos. We'll also discuss working with checkboxes, radio buttons, drop down lists, etc. So please stay tuned. Thank you for listening and have a great day.